In this video, we will talk about the concepts of quasi-concavity and quasi-convexity, concepts which are quite often used in economics. Well, just a quick review, hope you all know about concavity. So, what is a concave function? Graphically, it's a function which looks like this. So, it has a cave-like structure and hence it's called concave, right? So, and but mathematically, how do we define it? When we say a function f is concave, if, if f of lambda x plus 1 minus lambda y is greater than or equal to lambda f of x plus 1 minus lambda f of y. Now, what does this mean? So, let's say in my function, I have two points. Um, I have two points on the x-axis, x and y, corresponding to which I have points on the graph which are f of x and f of y. So this is f of x, this is f of y. Now what is lambda x plus 1 minus lambda y? This is any linear combination of x and y, where I should mention lambda lies between 0 and 1. So if I take any linear combination of x and y, it will be just a point lying between x and y. So it can lie, lie anywhere in this range. So now let's assume that my this thing lambda x plus 1 minus lambda y lies here, okay, this point. So I'll call this this point. Now what is f of this thing? It's just a point on the function corresponding to this point on the x-axis. So it's nothing but this point. So let me label this point as f of lambda x plus 1 minus lambda y, okay? Now, what is the right hand side? The right hand side is nothing but the linear combination of fx and fy. Earlier I had x and y, now it's fx and fy. So fx and fy are here, and if I take any linear combination of fx and fy, I will get a point which lies on this line, the line joining fx and fy. So my right hand side is just a point on this line. So it can be a point here or here, anywhere, anywhere on this line, right? Now what this definition says is that a function is concave if the, if the value of the function at any linear combination of x and y, which is this point, is higher than the the linear combination of the value of the function at these two points. So you see, if ever you have a function which is in the shape of a cave, then this will always be the case that this point will lie above this point, right? So uh, this point here I am referring to as um, lambda f of x plus 1 minus lambda f of y. So, so it's very obvious that this any function which has this shape will obey concavity. And similarly, if, if I reverse this sign, if I say this is less than or equal to, then I will end up having a convex function which will start looking like this, so that the, the thing which is higher is this point, any point here. So the linear combination of the um, value of the function is higher than the value of the function at the linear combination of x and y. So I hope this is something which everybody knows. Now, moving on from this concept to quasi-concavity and quasi-convexity. So, first, what is the meaning of quasi? Quasi simply means as if. So, when I'm talking about something which is quasi-concave, I'm saying a function which is as if concave. It's not really concave, but it's a rather weak notion of concavity. Now, there are two ways we can define this. The first way is this. We say a function f is quasi-concave if and only if f of lambda x plus 1 minus lambda y is greater than or equal to min of f of x f of y for all lambda lying between 0 and 1. Okay. So, what does this mean? So, let's say I have a function. Let, in fact, let us generate the function from this definition. 
and let's see what the shape looks like. So let's say I have two points x and y and I'm plotting this function f which is going to be quasi concave. okay? Now, um, okay, so let me take, uh, these are two points x and y for which the value of the function is defined. So fx and fy are defined, okay? Let's say this is my f of x and this is f of y. I have deliberately taken them to be at different heights for ease of understanding. So this point is f of x, this point is f, this, let me bring it, okay, f of y, right? Now, look at the right hand side. What is the min of fx and fy? Come to the graph, of course, obviously, it is at x, okay? Now the definition says, f of lambda x plus 1 minus lambda y is always greater than or equal to the min. Which means, what is this thing? So if I have any lambda x plus 1 minus lambda y lying anywhere here on the x-axis, and then I have the function value corresponding to that, then that function value is higher than the minimum. This is the minimum. Let me um, erase these lines. Okay, so the definition just says the value of the function at any point here, okay, this, this, any point here can be the lambda x plus 1 minus lambda y point, okay, and the function value corresponding to that should be higher than fx, fx is our minimum, so it should be higher than this line, okay, it should be above. So what does this mean? My graph can look like this. Okay, or my graph can look like this, or it can look like this, it can look any ways, just that it shouldn't come below this point. It should always lie higher than the minimum. So isn't it beautiful? See, now I am calling this a quasi-concave function, but it can be concave, it can be convex, it can be a straight line. So that's the beauty of quasi-concavity. It's a weak notion and a much more permissible notion than concavity. So clearly you can say a quiz. you can see quasi-concave function need not necessarily be concave. Now this second definition is helpful if you're thinking about a function in maybe say three dimensions or in higher dimensions, okay? So in that case we say a function f is quasi-concave if and only if the upper contour set. Now what is the upper contour set? It's just the set of all x for which f of x is greater than or equal to c. c is any real number. So for any real c. Okay? So, so the definition says a function is quasi-concave if the upper contour set is I'm sorry, if the upper contour set is convex, is a convex set for any real C. For any real C. Okay. Now, I hope you know what a convex set is. It's simple. So it's, a, it's just a set in which if you take any two points and then join the points, then the line joining those two points lies entirely within the set. That is a convex set. And now what I'm saying is that the upper contour set should be convex. Now, um, I hope you know about level curves. So here now, we are imagining a function in three dimensions maybe. So let's say we have a mountain, or maybe say a ball or a cone, and then we are trying to plot it in this two-dimensional whiteboard. Okay, so when we try to map a three-dimensional surface on a two-dimensional surface, we, uh, what we usually do is, we, we draw a contour map. So, so let's say that we have a, a mountain-like surface like this, okay? This is, this is a three-dimensional thing. And I want to draw it in the two-dimensional space, okay? So what I'll do is, I'll take uh, horizontal planes and I'll try to chop this at different heights. So let's say, uh, first I decide, okay, my height should be 1, okay? Then um, 
So on the z-axis, so let's say this is x-axis, this is y-axis, this is z-axis. So on the z-axis, I take one, okay, and I decide to chop this. So and I chop this plane here, this mountain here, and then I draw uh, the imprint on my plane of the mountain. So what will that be? That will definitely be a circle, right? So this is my first level curve or a contour. This is called a level curve. And then it's useful to label it, so I'll call it, this is a level curve for C equals 1. C is my height. Now, similarly, um, so similarly, we, um, I'll then chop it at different heights. I chop it at C equals 2, C equals 3, C equals 4, and then I keep on drawing the contours. So at the end, my contour map will look like this. So this is C equals 2, C equals 3, C equals 4. So I end up getting a graph like this. This is the contour map of my mountain. It, the diameter of the circles becomes smaller and smaller as the height increases. Now, uh, the definition says upper contour set. So, upper contour set should be convex for all C. Now, let's say I take C equals 1. What is the upper contour set? All the x's for which fx is greater than 1. And what are they? They lie, in, uh, they lie within this outer circle. So, all the fx for which fx is greater than 1. See, for c equals 2, I have, uh, this is on a higher height than c equals 1. And the third contour is on a higher height than the second one. So these, all points inside the outer circle, all the f's corresponding to those points are at a higher height, right? So that's why the upper contour set for c equals 1 is nothing but the inside area of this outer circle. So this means this is my upper contour set for c equals 1. And notice this is a circle. And the circle is always a convex set. Because if I take any two points here, I can always join them and the line will lie within the circle only. So what does this mean? This means my mountain is quasi concave. Now this was just the the usual definition, but it's important to see what more this definition can encompass. So, now imagine that I have a, a mountain only, but slightly distorted. Let's say it looks like a cone, okay? So, it does not have that natural con concave shape, but it has this convex shape, okay? And then I try, this is in, in three dimensions. And now I want to draw the level curves for this surface. Now when I draw the level curves, what will I find? I chop it here, 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 here. And then I am going to get almost same kind of contour map, just that the spacing of the circles will be different. So they'll become more closer, closer, closer as the height increases. So in this case, Again, you see, you see that if this is c equals 1, this is c equals 2, 3, 4, so on, then the upper contour set for c equals 1 is the circle, and that is convex. And you can do that for any c. You can take it for c equals 2, and you see the upper contour set is this, this area, and this is also convex. Similarly, so for all c, we see that the upper contour set is convex. This means this shape is also quasi concave. Now, importantly, how can we summarize this? Now, uh, quasi concavity, as I said, is a weaker notion than concavity. It's, it's got a more permissive nature. So, on a three dimensional surface, it's allowing certain parts to be convex as well as to be concave. So, so here's an interesting example that my teacher uh, gave in class once. That is of a pear. So you know the fruit pear? Um, this is an Indian pear, by the way. So how does it look like? It goes like this. So there is this part which goes inside. This is actually convex. This part is a convex part. And this part is a concave part. 
but if we go by the definition of quasi-concavity and we draw the contours for this sphere, again you will get a contour map like this which will all also satisfy the definition of quasi-concavity. So this sphere in effect is quasi-concave. So, okay now coming to quasi-convexity. In the next day we could imagine quasi-convex functions also and that's also easy. So let me just distort this definition a bit. So f will be called quasi-convex if in this case only thing that changes is the set changes. So instead of saying the upper contour set is convex, I will say the lower contour set is convex. So all x such that fx is less than or equal to c, this set is convex for any real c. Okay? So this is the definition of quasi-convexity. And to imagine quasi-convexity, let's say I this time have a surface which is uh, which is an uh, which is an inverse bell shape. So this was a bell shaped structure. Now let's say I have something like this. Okay. This is my shape. And then I try to and what what looks like this when I have a shuttlecock here. This is the shape. Okay. Inverse bell shape. Or let's say an inverse mountain shape. So what happens if I try to draw contours for this shuttlecock? I'll uh, chop it here and then at a higher height, higher height, what will I end up getting? I'll end up getting um, a, a contour map which again looks like this. Okay, let me draw the first contour. First, let me chop it here, okay? Uh, just for ease of understanding. Let's chop it here, okay, lower. I get a smaller circle. This is C equals 1, right? Now, I chop it higher, C at, at a higher height and I get a bigger circle. So C equals 2. And then higher, I get an even bigger circle, C equals 3, and so on. Again, the contour map looks like these only. They're just a set of concentric circles. But there is a difference. Here, the lowest height is in the center. The highest height is on the outside. And now my definition says the lower contour set should be convex. So, what is the lower contour set? So if I am at c equals 3, then lower contour set will be all those points for which c is less than 3, for which the function is at a height of less than 3. So what are those points? They are the points inside. So this is the lower contour set, right? And again we see this is just a circle, and a circle is a convex set. So this means this satisfies the definition of quasi-convexity. This means that my shuttlecock is quasi-convex in its shape. So hope this um, makes your economics classes more enjoyable now that you have a more graphical and visual understanding of quasi-concavity and uh, quasi-convexity.